Hi everyone, Joe March here, also known as Psycho Sorcerer, and it's been over two months since my last video, and I got some shit to say! So today we're talking about the gods! That makes sense, right? Why not? So the last video on this channel was called, Is the Eternity God? Spoiler alert, the answer to that video is no. And we're gonna get into that a little bit again, because I feel like it's important for me to explain what I mean by that in simpler terms this time instead of in a 27 minute video. When we talk about the Eternity, or the Grand Infinity, or the all, or the source, or all that is. Sometimes, in the occult communities, we have a tendency to call that thing God. And I think that's fine if that's what you want to do. I used to call it God as well. I would say that was the one God, because it was the all, it was the everything, and that is from which everything else comes. It is what we are connected with, it's what we really are, it's everything. But... I have found in my own practices that referring to that thing as God messes my ass up. So I don't do it anymore. And that's probably the quick and dirty way to explain what that last video was about. For me, if I call the all God, it personifies it. It makes it into a being. But the all is not a being. The all is everything. The all can't be an individual because the all is not an individual, by definition. And so to call it God is to try to personify the all into a thing. But it is not a thing, it's everything. And nothing. Now, I have a friend who does videos who calls it God, and I'm 100% fine with that. Because when he talks about it, you can tell we're talking about the same thing. Because he will say, God is not personal. You cannot talk to God like a person. And that calling upon the names of God is calling upon the different energies of what I call the all. And so I believe we're talking about the same thing, but why is it valuable for him to call this thing God? Because his path and his work is done in a more traditional style. And I don't mean like it's more traditional, I mean he has a tradition, and when you have a tradition that works for you, keep working with the fucking tradition then, man. Don't worry about what I'm saying. If your lexicon is working for you, keep using it. For me personally, though, who doesn't come out of that tradition, calling something God makes me want to personify it. It makes me want to think of it as a person. So even though I know that this all is not personal, that it doesn't impose upon you, that you are it and it is you, that it is Grant, if you want to say granted free will, you could say that, but free will is almost just the way things are. Even though I understand this, if I call it God, I'll start thinking, well, what does it want? There is no it wants. It's the all. It's not an it. I don't even know how to talk about it, really. Because you keep using the word it, but it's not an it. It's all. It is and if you think beyond that, that there's some kind of agenda it wants for you, then you are not talking about the same thing that I'm talking about. And when you think of a god, you tend to go that way. So, that's why I don't call it god anymore. I call it the eternity, or I call it the all, whatever. And ever since I've made that switch about three months ago, my life has improved. Because I've started to gain agency. I've started to see a lot of things that I would have attributed to maybe a higher force in your life, is really me doing shit. And am I still interacting with this greater thing that is? Yes. And using it to improve my life? Yeah. But it's no longer like I'm on somebody else's time. It's no longer like I am having this happen to me. Now I'm making decisions and having interactions with this existence because of decisions I'm making. There is no one in control. There is me directing myself toward goals. It's different. It's very hard to explain if you're not someone who's gone down this line of thinking, but eh, hopefully I did a good enough job. I don't want this part to be too long. So, that's that other video in a nutshell, but explained in a way that maybe makes more sense and is much more concise. But working this way for the past three months has made me question, what are the gods, then, that we evoke and speak to? Because 
you can speak to them. So if the all is beyond us being able to speak directly to it and have it respond back, but the gods you can speak to and have them respond back, what the fuck are they, right? I think I have this nailed down, and that's what we're going to talk about. So a lot of you who've watched my channel before have heard me talk about the teacher, which is my word for the subconscious mind that is larger than the self, that is greater, the true self, or probably a better way to put it if you're in New Age circles is the higher self. If you're from the Golden Dawn, it's the Holy Guardian Angel. If you're from Ancient Greece, it's the Daemon. If you're from Sinisterism Path, in the left-hand path, it's the Inner Demon. It is that you which is beyond the you. It is that you that is under the surface of you. It is your every imagining and experience all at once. It's what we really are, in my opinion. But also, because of the nature of how the conscious mind and the ego works, we're not constantly in the state of understanding that that is what we are. In a sense, we're able to interact with that part of ourself as opposed to being that way all the time. And the activity that is to try to make that part of us at least somewhat constantly engaged in our life, constantly in conversation, or constantly active in our own experience all the time, that's what I call the alchemical wedding. The merging of the conscious and subconscious minds, the merging of the lower and higher selves, etc. But what is that? What is that thing? If I'm going to talk to my higher self. Do I have to go anywhere? No. I'm always connected to my higher self. My higher self is in much the same way that the all is. My higher self is having an experience of reality through me right now. But I am not the fullness of my higher self when I appear to you this way. I'm an expression of my higher self living in a human body, if that makes sense. I'm going to try to keep this light. and I've already failed. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep from going too deep. I'm an expression of my higher self living in a human body, but I can communicate with that higher self. And we do this all the time when we dream. When you dream, who's making the dream? You are. But are you consciously, is your egoic conscious mind the one coming up with the dream? No. But it's still you making the dream, right? That's the higher self. That is how everything actually works. The amount of what you're doing that is actually conscious is actually extraordinarily small. But all the rest of that that's going on is still you doing it. That greater you is the higher self. Now, that higher self does not have a human body. A human body is this meat puppet thing that I have, like, a association with because of the way that the conscious and everything works. But, in my opinion, the higher self is actually much greater than this body. You could say it's smaller if you're looking at it a different way. Different, there's different views as to what it actually is and, and how that works. If you're someone who's very materialistic you would probably think materialistic that's not the word like uh you're into material science and you don't believe in any of the occult you're probably going to think of it as just the subconscious mind and therefore it would be smaller than the self it would be parts of the mind and whatnot and maybe parts of the spinal column and everything else that interconnects the network of the body but it would be that other stuff that isn't your conscious mind but i think it goes beyond that personally from my experience, the higher self is everything you've ever experienced, everything that you imagine, everything that you are, and everything that you aren't, which kind of sounds like everything, but it's unique to you at the same time. It is your version of everything. It is your tiny version of the all. 
as above, so below, as within, so without. There is an all that is yours. That's the higher self. What does all that mean? Meditate on it, man. I don't know. I'm still working on it. I'm not like the guru up here that has all the answers. I'm just telling you where I'm at. So, we've got the higher self, right? And we can communicate with the higher self directly through meditation and trance. We can even speak to it like a person if we let it become personified, which is something that's very easy to do, and we all do it all the time without even realizing we're doing it. Anytime you talk to yourself and you hear your own voice answer back and you didn't think about what you were going to say before the answer came, that thing is the higher self. If you're not having to go through the motion of thinking about the answer, but the answer still comes, and it's still coming from you, not the conscious you, this is the thing we're talking about, right? You can sit down to imagine something, and you can try to visualize something and have it appear in your mind's eye, in your imagination, or you can let go and let whatever appears in your imagination just come to be. Those are two different ways to imagine. In the first one, you're using your conscious mind to instill upon the imagination, which is part of that higher self, an image. But in the second way, you're letting that higher self build an image, and that's how you communicate with the higher self. Now, if you get good at it, you can talk to it like a person. But you can also recognize when doing so that you're talking to a version of yourself. It feels like you're talking to a smarter version of yourself, Sometimes it might not even look like you. But the other thing that you start to understand as you spend more time working with this teacher, as I call it, is that it is not actually a being in that sense. Like, it is you and everything you've been and everything you've done and everything you're not and everything you've seen and everything you've wondered. And as a result, it is not a humanoid the way that the conscious you is. So when you look in a dream and you see streets and streetlights and flashing signs, all of that is the higher self. It's all being shown to you from that thing. Every individual you talk to in those dreams are the higher self taking on different roles. The higher self is not a single person in the way that we are. It is more than that, right? But it is still unique to you. It's your unique version of basically that same thing. If you want to go with the God explanation, you could say we are like the sons of God or reflections of God or like demigods with our own little spark that is that thing. And a lot of the occult goes that way. I'm not using that language now because I find that it seems to muddy the waters. But as a metaphor goes to help grasp it, it's great. So, you got the all, and you got your higher self, right? What are the gods, though? Stuff that's in between, sort of. So I've always been a proponent of the idea that the gods represent forces, and that those forces are what are the actual thing that you are interacting with. So, for example, when I work with Tiamat, I am working with the force of life, death, and rebirth. I am working with the force of transformation. I am working with the force of chaos and fate. And so, when I work with the Morgan, well, I'm working with them same forces, aren't I? When I'm working with Ishtar and Ereshkigal, which again, for people who aren't familiar with the Babylonian, Mesopotamian, Sumerian, etc., uh, the goddess of love and war, and the goddess of the underworld, who are sisters, and who, from my opinion, are one being with different faces, sort of. What am I working with? I'm working with the transformative powers of the seasons? Oh, look, it's the cycle of life, death, rebirth, transformation. So, in the past, when I've worked with Tiamat, and Tiamat has said... That when you worked with Ishtar, when you worked with Ereshkigal, when you worked with the Morgan, and when you worked with me, you worked with the same being. What I believe she's saying is that I'm working with the same 
force, the force of transformation. Now, does the force of transformation exist separate from the other forces in the all? No, because the all is everything and all of the forces are part of everything. So just as Tiamat has said before, I am a face of the all. I am the all seen through a certain lens. This force is a portion of the all and by segmenting out a portion to look at closely, you can learn from it. Because if you try to learn from everything, there's nothing. Like if I try to evoke into my space everything, well, it's already here, isn't it? I didn't evoke anything. Everything is already all around me. But if I try to evoke a specific force, well, now I'm changing the temperature in the room. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm specifically calling out something to examine. And you see this in science when we examine anything. You have to split it into simpler pieces and then explore what is going on with those pieces in order to understand the whole better. So when you work with a force, you're working with a piece of the all so that you can better understand the all. And this is what Tiamat means when Tiamat says that she is a representation of the all with its own face that I'm able to talk to. I'm able to talk to her because she is not the all now that I've split it from it. But she still is the all. You get what I'm saying. Now, does this force of transformation have its own boundaries? Is every god of transformation just this one thing? And is it always separate from the other forces? No! Who's drawing the line around this force? I am. I'm the one choosing what to talk to. I'm the one defining what it is I need to learn. And which part of me is drawn toward that force? The higher self. The part of me that's intuitive, the part of me that can reach out, the part of me that's connected to the all, the part of me that can call upon these archetypes, is drawn to the thing it wants to learn about. And so, I'm able to learn about it because of that. Now, how do I talk to a force? Well, you got to personify it, right? We already know we can talk to our higher self through the imagination if we're willing to not press upon the imagination what we want to see but rather let it show us cool well can we call something into that imagination and have it show us that absolutely we can and so if you call upon a force into the realm of the higher self then it will manifest visions and the like for you to be able to learn from, perhaps ideas, perhaps concepts. But even better than that would be if we could talk to it like a person, right? That'd be cool. And you know what? Our imagination can turn something into a person. Hell, we can talk to the higher self in a form that looks like a person if we ask it to look that way. So why can't we make a force look that way? Obviously we can, but wouldn't it be easier if we already had shared stories and appearances of what that force would look like, like mythology. And that's how you get in contact with the force. You take the force, it sounds like Star Wars. You take the imagery, the shared traditions, the mythology, the stories of these beings, which were defin defined by the forces they represented, and now you've got a personified version of that force. And now you can talk to it, right? And that is what the gods are. So is Tiamat the god the same thing as the Morgan the god? 
No. They have their own unique mythology. They have their own unique styles. They have their own unique personality. And if you talk to them both, it's gonna feel like different people. But do they represent the same overall force? Yes. So they are like masks of that force, versions of that force, further separated out into something even easier to communicate with. I think you're seeing the pattern here, right? So in order to understand the all, let's split it into the forces. In order to understand the forces, let's split them into deities gods. In order to speak to those gods, let's impress the versions of those gods into our own higher self, which is able to have a communication through that process, and then we can speak to the god, but what are we actually talking to at that point? The higher self. We are talking to the higher self. I'll just say it. The higher self. We're talking to the higher self, but it is being filled up with the specifics related to that god so your higher self is now taking on a form that represents the force you're trying to talk to with given specifics of what the god is and you're able to learn now as if talking to a separate individual from yourself even though it is just your own greater self showing you this image of this thing it's allowing you to take the concept outside of your supposed self so you can have a conversation with. Now, does that make it seem less personal? Maybe, but to me it doesn't because the personality there, the personal, is actually your interaction with that higher self, which is directly interacting with the all. You are having what most people would call a spiritual experience, but it is an experience you're having with yourself. But yourself is much bigger than what you know. And that is how I believe interactions with the gods works. Now you may say, why is it then that sometimes the gods show up and they're assholes to you? I didn't say that your higher self is always going to give you what you want to hear. If you are only hearing what you want to hear... When you talk to these things, then you're not working with the higher self. You're working with your own imagination that you're directing. The key to this is to not direct it, to let the higher self show you what you really fucking believe. And that is going to make you grow in ways you never could have done otherwise. Now, do you need it to all sound this way? Could you do this purely psychological and say you're just opening yourself up to some kind of dynamic acting? Sure, it'll still work. That's not exactly how I see it, because I do have this view that the higher self is much greater than what we tend to think the subconscious mind is. And I do believe that I am actually connecting with the all whenever I do these things. But I also believe that I'm always connected with the all. I believe that we, as people, are not as individual as we want to believe that the outline of this body is an arbitrary line that I've decided exists, and that that's not actually where I stop and the rest of the universe begins. And these type of ways of looking at things are why I have a slightly different view than what would be the traditional just psychological view. However, I'm also not the traditional view, as you can tell. Because I'm moving away from calling them gods as well, for the reasons we've just talked about. But I still think it's extremely worth your time to interact with them and to grow from them. Now why am I working all the time with this force of transformation? The thing that I once called Tiamat all the time. Through the thing that I always called the teacher, which is really the higher self. Why am I working with that one? Because that's what I need. That is the path I'm on. The path of learning more about transformation, embodying more about transformation. It's about changing myself. And for everyone, they're going to have their own path and they're going to have their own thing that they need to embody. But don't get it twisted. Don't think that if you are going to embody 
a specific God's values that you work for them. You don't. They exist as concept, as archetype, as force. They don't actually exist as individuals the way that we do. And yet, there is an individualness about them from the very experience of us splitting them up. In other words, what's making them exist as an individual is us. If we weren't there to pull those pieces out of the all and make it into something to talk to, they would just be the all. And that's the gods. Now, people are going to ask me, what about demons? What about angels? What about the fae? What about the fair folk? I don't know. I don't work with that. I thought you. I bet you guys thought I was going to say, it's all the same thing. I don't know. I don't work with that. People who work with things like the fae tend not to see them in the way that people who work with the gods see them. People who work with the gods always compare them to forces. Even if you don't think they do, they do. Zeus is not just a character. He is the sky fucking god that throws lightning bolts. Hades is the god of the underworld. And the underworld is also called Hades. Because he is the underworld. Right? You get what I'm saying? The gods are always forces incarnate. That's normal. And so when I'm talking about it in this way, I'm talking about it using the very same lexicon that mythology has always used. But things like the Fae, things like angels, things like demons are usually talked about as if they are individuals underneath of these forces. Now, could there be another layer to it that these things are? Could it still be the all split up into a force, split up into the gods, split up into the... Sure, maybe. I don't know. But the reason I say I don't know is because I don't work with those particular entities so I haven't analyzed it. So if I was going to sit here and speculate, it would be guesses. And I don't want to guess. There's plenty of people I know that I talk to and that I hang out with that work with those types of forces. And from their point of view, it's a very different experience than working with the gods. So don't get it twisted. Don't think that I'm saying every spiritual experience is this. What I'm talking about is specifically the all specifically the gods, specifically the archetypes and forces, specifically the higher self, and specifically the conscious egoic self. That's it. Don't bring anything else into it. Don't bring shit into it that I didn't bring into it. That's all I'm saying. All right. One last thing. This one is a bonus. This is the fun thing that you get to start dealing with if you go too far down this rabbit hole. If you picture the all as like a flat plane that goes out infinitely, and you think that there is also a way to carve it into the forces, right? We'll just say we're going to carve a circle out of there. Cool. We got this circle here, right? And there's a force. And that force can be represented by a deity, right? God. And you have your higher self. If you place the higher self over that flat plane you have them like this and you think of yourself as being on top yeah on top of that higher self plane like a little bubble right well then what happens is that this force pushes up pushes up against this higher self plane right to form a thing that you can see up here as the bubble right like oh you're pushing up through. And it's not coming through. It's the higher self is forming this thing. It's getting impressed upon by this force. By the all, but specific part of it. So it's like you have the all, and then it can bubble into a specific part. But that bubble can press up against your higher self, which is your own unique little piece of all of this stuff. And then it bubbles up through there. And that's where you are. 
But what are you in this scenario? If you just have the higher self, if you think of like, again, if you think of the all and it bubbles up a little force, this looks weird now, it bubbles up a little force out of itself that's separate because you want it to be separate. And then you think of the higher self as a copy of the all. And there's a self conscious. We the same thing. This is why TM out always said, every time I asked about what they are, that humans are the same things they are. Because we really exist every bit as much as they do. You can take that how I mean it, or you can ignore it if it makes you feel uncomfortable. That's it. That's all I want to say. Now I'm going to disappear for another five months because apparently I don't know how to sit down and make videos anymore. No, that's not true. I actually have a big announcement coming out in the next few months. I hope that it'll be an announcement in the next two weeks. But the announcement depends on some shit to happen. But I'm excited about it. But I don't want to talk about it yet. I do want to talk about it, but I'm not going to talk about it. So expect another video from me. It'll either be in the next two weeks or the next five years. I don't fucking know. That's how shit's going right now. And until next time, safe travels.